What website feature do 67% of people say they use? If you said chatbot assistance, you did a great job at reading the title of this video. But what does that mean for businesses that don't have chatbot customer assistance on their site? Things are moving fast these days and customers expect immediate responses. Not having a chatbot on your website could mean losing nearly two thirds of your potential customers. That's a risk no business wants to take. Luckily, there are solutions that don't require any coding skills and look professional on your website. The easiest by far is Chatlane and they're the sponsor of today's video. Chatlane's design to understand and respond to your customers with the same knowledge and insight as a human assistant. Chatlane stands out because it's powered by the most advanced AIs like ChatGPT or Claude, and it allows you to upload files, training data, and even entire websites into its knowledge base to help it answer customers' questions. This means your chatbot will know everything about your business, ensuring customers get accurate and helpful answers every time. I'll walk you through how easy it is to put one of these on your site and feed it custom data about your business. If you find this video useful or you just like learning Learning about new products and AI, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you learn something new, make sure you hit the like button. Okay, so to get started, I have a link in the video description for Chatlane, the platform where we can set up the chatbot and then add it to our website. Once you sign up, they'll let you do a lot with the free tier that they offer, and for $35 a month, you actually gain a ton of additional capability if you need it. Once you set up an account, you'll see this dashboard view here. So to make our first chatbot, click Create Chatbot and then it'll load these templates that you can choose from or build one from scratch. I'm gonna select the AI chatbot template for the example today. I'm gonna to name it Tech at Work Helper. Then you see it creates a dashboard that you can use to manage the chatbot we're making. The first thing I wanna do for our chatbot is add a knowledge base or the information about my business that I want the chatbot to know when it's interacting with customers. So click knowledge base here on the sidebar and then add a new knowledge base. From here, you can see all the different methods you can use to feed your chatbot with knowledge. The first is a website link where it will crawl up to a thousand pages of a website and use the information from the site. This is useful if you want the bot to have full knowledge of your website, which can be helpful if people wanna know where certain features are or specific information that might be buried deep in your website. The sitemap allows you to specify specific web pages from a site, and the URL list lets you make a list of websites you want the chatbot to have knowledge of. Text allows you to paste the information directly for the knowledge that you want. And FAQ lets you add common questions and the responses you want the chatbot to have for your users. And you can add as many here as you need. Document lets you upload a PDF or text file that the chatbot can reference. For today's example, I actually had ChatGPT make me a fake business profile for a Tech at Work golf course called Tech at Work Country Club. And it gave me a bunch of information about the golf course, including the hours, the address, contact information, cost for memberships, course information like yardage, slope, etc., uh, and details on the country club restaurant, and even the brands that the pro shop carries. So I'm going to paste this full business profile into the text box here and hit submit. It'll think for a moment and then store the information for this chatbot to use and reference when it's helping users. The next thing I want to briefly cover is the chatbot appearance. So click appearance here on the left sidebar. This portion is pretty intuitive and it lets you customize how the chatbot will look to users on your website. So you can customize the colors, the width of the window, even give it a custom image for its icon in the chat window here. As you adjust these, it will reflect the changes here in the preview so you know exactly what it's gonna look like on your website. So once you're happy with how it looks, make sure you save it. If you go to text, it'll let you change the header text of the window and then configure has some more advanced settings that you can play around with. One of the features that makes your chatbot look extra professional is the hover message section here at the bottom. You can have it wait a few seconds and then have a message pop up like, can I help you? They also let you have the chatbot window open after some time if you wanna push users to using the chatbot window and then toggle it if you only want it to open once per user visit so that people aren't getting badgered by the chat window if they don't intend to use it. So once you have all that set up, then save it and go back to the dashboard. The next part's the fun part. The builder is where we're gonna map out how we want our conversations with the user to go and what information we wanna collect from the user. So click builder on the left-hand sidebar and you'll see it opens the canvas with some boxes and connectors already in place. This is because we selected the AI chatbot template and so it has a basic conversation map here. These track the flow of the user's interaction with the chatbot and what you want the chatbot to say in response. If you click the block section on the left sidebar, you'll see all the blocks they allow you to add. The send block section here are the blocks that the chatbot will send to the user in the window. And the capture response blocks are where you'll get information from the user in the chat window. So if we look at the template that they have here for us, after start, the conversation goes to a send block message that says, I'm an AI chatbot that can answer all your questions. Before we get started, please provide your details below. 
And if you click on this, I can change the text that gets sent from the chatbot. Then as part of that node, there's a form that's sent for collecting information from the user. In this case, name and email. If we click into these, you'll see it lets you adjust the label, whether you require the user to fill out this box in order to continue, and then the expected input from the user. In this case, text, but it could be a number or a date if you're asking them to book a reservation, for example. Then they'll let you store the user's response as a variable that you can use later in the conversation. So here we've stored the contact name and then in the next node, after the user provides the information and hits enter, it's gonna use that variable in the text to the user to make the message personalized. Below the name, it also asks for the email and you can remove that or add whatever you'd like here and whether you require that information for the user to move on in the conversation. It's also worth noting that collecting this information can be useful because Chatlin saves these responses in a table so you can start to build a contact or marketing list from this. Like I mentioned, the next box is the conversation after the person has entered their name and email and the chatbot will say, hi, name of the person, how can I assist you today? And you can see if I click uh, contact underscore name, it drops down and I can have it place any variable here that we've defined previously. So if we needed it to reference anything else the person provided in the conversation, we can use these variables which update for each new conversation. So after the chatbot asks what it can help with, the next node is a capture response text box. And if you click it, you see we can define what the person replies with as a variable. In this case, the user underscore question uh, and whether it's required for the person to move on in the conversation, as well as limit the number of characters. You might do this to limit how much text is sent to ChatGPT to answer the question. If you click the box below that, this is where we're sending the user question to ChatGPT to generate a response. You can set up a global AI, which will be the default for any AI boxes in the conversation map, or you can set specific boxes to have custom settings at certain points in the conversation. This can be useful if generally you want the chatbot to use the lower cost ChatGPT 3.5, for example, but maybe at certain points in the conversation, it requires a fancier ChatGPT, so you're sure that it answers that part of the conversation correctly. This is where you can set that. You can see we're defining the source of the response, so we'll have it set to the knowledge base of our business that we set earlier, or we can just let the AI respond based on the normal base ChatGPT model. Then you can have it save the AI's response as a variable if you want to reference that later in the conversation. Stream is if you want the AI to feed answers word by word, similar to how ChatGPT generates responses on their user interface. Uh, or if you untick it, uh, it'll just send a single response like a user would when they're typing out a reply and then hitting enter and sending the whole thing all at once. Not found path. This allows you to define a path if the AI can't find an answer in the knowledge base. You could have it respond with having the AI prompt the user to email the question to a specific email address, for example. Uh, otherwise, the AI is going to come up with its own reply, like, unfortunately, I don't have that answer. Model is where we're specifying what AI model to use for this box. Uh, if you open this, at the moment, Chatlin supports a ton of different language models from ChatGPT 4.0 Mini to Claude 3.5. If you upgrade your account, you can use more of these models. To set the global AI settings, if you click the AI configuration here on the left sidebar, it allows you to provide a context prompt for the AI that gets added to the prompt when it's answering the user's question from the chat. They give some examples here of what you can add based on how you want your chatbot to interact with users. Knowledge base is where you define the information we uploaded earlier, so it can reference it when answering questions. And then settings is where you can define the AI model for the global settings or the default AI. They also recommend you put your business name in here to help the AI stay on topic. The last adjustment in the left sidebar here is settings where you can set the delay of responses if you want the AI to feel more human. You can have it wait to send the reply so it feels like there's a person typing on the other side and then pressing enter. To further build out the conversation map, you simply drag and drop the blocks into the canvas here and map out the conversation flow that you want. Then you connect the blocks using these pathway connectors. Uh, if you right click, it'll allow you to delete anything that you don't need. Now that we have a basic chatbot with full knowledge of my business, I'll show you how to add it to any website builder like Wix or Squarespace. First, I wanna make sure and save the conversation map that I have and then publish it so that it's live. Then I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and under integrations, click add to website. Here you can decide if you want a floating chat window or maybe a half screen. Uh, they even offer a full screen chat window if you want a dedicated support page on your website. Then you just hit copy code and this is the HTML that you can paste into the HTML editors of any website builder. 
to see what that looks like, I'm gonna add this one to a Squarespace site. So the easiest way to find the HTML code injection is to just search HTML. And for at least Squarespace, it pops right up. Now I'll paste the code from Chatlane and hit save. And just like that, it adds the chatbot that we just built onto my Squarespace site. I can test it out and put my information in here, hit enter. And so you can see that it works really great. The cool thing is, after the user puts this information in, you can go back to the Chatlane dashboard and under contacts and leads, you can see it added the information that I put into this table here. So now I can start to build a contact and marketing list. You can also review all the conversations and fine tune its responses to make sure that it's interacting with users the way that you want. Chatlane offers most of its capability under their free tier, but they also have premium tiers that offer a ton of additional features and access to other AI models. Uh, and the ability to create multiple chatbots. So you can build a chatbot for each page of your website if you want, and it'll be able to answer detailed questions about products or pricing, whatever you want. Again, I have a link in the video description, so go check it out. Thanks again to Chatlane for sponsoring today's video. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this type of content or just wanna learn about using AI. That's all for now. Until next time, thanks.